if any folks are trickling in, we're going to get started here on the hour, um, and we're just hanging out till then. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. And if you guys haven't already, uh, and I know Dan will talk more about this, we have a Slack channel for Q&A in our crossplane um, Slack. I think it's uh, pound upbound dash cloud in crossplane.slack.com. So far, it looks like Michael is, is our first attendee. Nice. Looks like Steven has joined and Rob getting a good squad in here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. All right, we're top of the hour, but we're gonna give it a, a few more minutes here to let some more folks trickle in. All right, for any folks who are just joining, we're gonna give it a couple more minutes here. Uh, we've got some folks trickling in. Don't want anyone to miss any of the great content we're gonna to share today. Let's give it another minute and then we can uh, kick this off. Sounds good to me. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, my name is Daniel Mangum. Uh, I am a maintainer of the Crossplane project, a software engineer at Upbound, and the host of our TBS live stream show. 
Um, I'm joined by Grant Gumina today, uh, who is a product manager at Upbound, who is going to um, be helping me uh, present today on uh, building your own cloud native platform on Kubernetes uh, with Upbound and Crossplane. Um, we're going to show you a live demo uh, later on, um, but before that, we're going to set some context about what building a cloud native platform looks like today um, and how Upbound and Crossplane can assist you in that. Um, before I pass it off to Grant, I just want to mention, as Grant did earlier on, um, that there is a channel in Crossplane Slack um, that is upbound-cloud. Uh, please feel free to drop any questions in there. We'll make sure to be monitoring that, and we'll have some dedicated Q&A time at the end. Um, but without any further ado, I want to go ahead and pass it off to Grant to get us kicked off. Awesome. Thanks for that introduction, Dan. So like Dan said, uh, I'm a product manager here at Upbound where I work closely with customers, helping them use Crossplane and deploying our commercial product, uh, Upbound Cloud. Uh, like most folks who tune into Dan's podcast probably already know, Upbound invented this open source project called Crossplane. And most people who are using Crossplane today use it as a way to provision and manage infrastructure, services, and applications directly from their Kubernetes cluster using kubectl. But Crossplane does a lot more than that. And so today, we're going to show you how you can use Crossplane with our product Upbound Cloud to build, run, and operate your very own PaaS. It's something that SREs have been dreaming of for a very long time. And one thing to note is that Upbound Cloud today is currently in public preview. And what we're going to show you is about to be GA'd later this year and is currently being tested with some early customers. And these early customers have really told us a lot of interesting things. They've told us that companies everywhere, including their own, are adopting cloud native technologies like Kubernetes to reduce the costs of running applications and increase developer productivity. And so what that really means is that containers are cheaper and faster to run than traditional expensive VMs. And microservices architectures lend themselves very well to a Heroku style development cycle with GitOps and CI CD. And the, the only issue is that deploying these technologies and te techniques into production in an enterprise is pretty challenging, both from an organizational and technical perspective. So to empower hundreds of developers to use cloud native technologies like our customers are trying to do, you need a Kubernetes cluster, but not just one. You need the ability to dynamically create more clusters with each one being as intricately configured as the first. And then you need a way to declaratively manage them. And then a way to connect applications running inside the clusters to services like RDS and S3. And any SRE is going to tell you this, it's that deploying an enterprise grade Kubernetes cluster is hard enough. Deploying many of them and managing them all at once is one of the toughest problems in the industry today. So what we've seen is that customers end up looking for an off the shelf Kubernetes platform or a solution from a vendor who specializes in deploying Kubernetes into an enterprise. But unfortunately for a lot of our customers, neither of those options work out really well. Off the shelf products are typically too opinionated for most enterprises. You know, they don't really let you choose your favorite service mesh or external DNS provider. And then they lock you into a single vendor, almost like you're back into a world of VMs. And similarly, a lot of vendor solutions end up being this sort of albatross, which slows down innovation. And it can feel at times like you're back into a world of enterprise managed services with slow response times and a complete lack of configurability. So the solutions themselves might be enterprise grade, but they're not necessarily cloud native. They're not agile or customizable enough for the needs of a modern enterprise. So managing so the, other, the other option, and, and we see this a lot, and it's, it's actually very positive, which is picking up a managed Kubernetes service like GKE or EKS. It's a lot better. But still, with those products, batteries aren't necessarily included right out of the box. So there's still a lot of setup an enterprise needs to do once the cluster is up and running. And that setup takes a lot of time and employees away from other higher priority work. You know, you need to create and configure VPCs, subnets, IAM roles for those clusters. And then you actually need to give the, your teams access to them. 
And then after that, you need to configure and install service meshes ingress monitoring on each cluster. And so lastly, the, 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 the last part of this is that no matter which approach you take to get Kubernetes up and running in your enterprise today, once those clusters are running, the developers who deploy applications to them still can't provision infrastructure easily. And even once they have provisioned infrastructure, it's difficult to connect the applications running in the cluster to that provisioned infrastructure. Today, all of those workflows are done separately through entirely different interfaces using different tools and products which don't natively integrate well with Kubernetes. And so that's left many companies, including our customers, really with only one option. That's to build their own Kubernetes paths from scratch using hardware that's either on-prem or in the cloud of their choice, configured exactly how they want and free of any vendor lock-in. And inside this platform lives all your configuration, policies, automation, and abstraction for all your applications across all your environments. The problem is for most customers, building this is a one to three year journey with anywhere from five to 10 full-time SREs dedicated to this project. And it can cost upwards of millions of dollars. And on top of that, the knowledge for how to do this really, really well hasn't really been democratized yet. So only a handful of SREs in the industry know how to do this. And so what we do at Upbound and what we're going to show you today is how you can take this one to three year process and really dramatically accelerate it to save time and money. And you're going to, you can accelerate it while empowering SREs to work on higher value business problems. And in fact, we think we can show you in the next 10 or so minutes how to lay the foundations of your own Kubernetes paths using Crossplane and Upbound Cloud. And so here's some context before we get into the demo. First, using Crossplane, we can actually define our entire Kubernetes deployment and platform declaratively with YAML, all in a single repository, which contains all configuration, policy, and abstraction. We call this a platform configuration, and we'll show you how it can be ingested into Upbound Cloud to quickly spin up a Crossplane instance and instantiate the platform exactly as you've defined it. Pretty soon, we're going to transition to Dan giving you a demo of that experience, how to actually build this using Crossplane and YAML. But as he shows you that, just keep in mind that Upbound Cloud acts as a single pane of glass into all the infrastructure that's running that PaaS, provides an easy to use management interface for all the Crossplane clusters that are running it, and gives your app teams a way to actually self-service some of the abstracted infrastructure types Dan's going to show you how to build with Crossplane. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to pass this over to Dan. And Dan, you can show the audience how we can start building their own paths uh, using Crossplane. Absolutely. Thanks, Grant. Uh, that set some really good context for what we're going to be looking at now. Um, and as Grant said, I'm going to jump right into a demo here. Um, so taking all that context we had around how hard it is to build your own um, enterprise cloud native platform on Kubernetes. Uh, we're going to look at how you could build a very simple platform um, in just a few lines of YAML here um, and with a Kubernetes cluster that just has Crossplane installed. Um, so today we're going to be looking at a very simple cloud native platform. It's called the MyOrg cloud native platform. Uh, this is available on GitHub if you let take take a look at it later. Um, but essentially all this does is it defines one new type of infrastructure resource, which is a cluster. Um, so if you're familiar with provisioning um, a managed Kubernetes service on your favorite cloud provider, um, be it AWS, GCP, Azure, et cetera, uh, you know there's a lot of configuration that goes into that. And it's not just configuring that one resource, it's how the permissioning is set up, the IAM roles, the networking, all of the above are really important things you have to consider when provisioning a new resource. Now, as a platform team member or an SRE, you may be really familiar with how to configure this, but if you want developers within your organization to be able to self-service, you likely want to present them an abstraction on top of that. So these cloud providers have promised you an abstraction of resources and a platform as a service, um, but frequently, as Grant mentioned, they're way too complicated. So you may want a kind of Heroku experience, but where you choose your own level of abstraction. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be showing how this cluster resource, which is very simply configurable, um, is going to abstract away provisioning an EKS cluster on AWS. So to get started, 
If you're familiar with Kubernetes, there's the concept of a custom resource definition. This defines a new API type in your cluster. When you create a, cu a custom resource definition, or a CRD for short, it allows other users in that cluster to be able to create instances of it. So you're basically defining a new API endpoint. So your platform is gonna be made up of a number of these API endpoints. In this case, we wanna create a new endpoint or a new type called cluster. Um, this is very similar to what you'll see in a CRD. In fact, part of the template here is a CRD spec template. Um, and what we call this is a composite resource definition or XRD for short. Basically, this is saying to Crossplane, hey, I'd like to make this new type available in my cluster, and here's the schema that I want um, folks that interact with this to be able to use. So you'll see here that we're defining just a few fields, um, primarily um, just the number of nodes we want in the cluster. So we know how to provision as an SRE or as a platform team, we know how to provision an EKS cluster that's connected to our VPCs, um, has the necessary IAM roles and all of that is wired together as well as attaching a node group to it. But we'd like for a developer within our organization to just be able to say, hey, I'd like a cluster, I'd like all that to be configured automatically for me and I'd just like to tell you what the size is. So how do we actually do that mapping onto what happens on AWS? Well, for every XRD, you can define a number of compositions. In this case, on this platform, we're just going to have one, um, but you could have a variety of different ones. I could also have a GKE flavor here that, that provisioned a resource on GKE as opposed to um, EKS. Um, but here we're just showing a simple one for EKS, and you'll see that we're mentioning that this satisfies that composite type that we defined already uh, as the cluster in the kubernetes.my.org group. Um, and these are all of the different resources uh, that are going to make up this abstract type that we're presenting to developers within our organization. So we have an IAM role, an IAM role policy attachment. In fact, we have a few of those. There's quite a few things you have to configure to be able to create a cluster. Um, we have the cluster itself, which we've already got pinned to our subnets here. You could also provision new subnets if you wanted um, in these templates. Uh, and if you scroll down, you'll see that we have a node group. Um, and that node group is going to uh, match the cluster that we are also provisioning in the same composition. Um, and it's gonna be tied to that. You'll see here that part of the configuration for a node group, which if you've done this via the AWS API, these fields are gonna look exactly the same, uh, is the desired size. So this is the number of nodes in this node group. What we're doing down here is saying that from that, that composite resource that we defined, the cluster resource XRD that we started off with, we'd like to take that spec.nodes field and take that to the scaling config desired size field here. So we're saying that in this case, we want those number of nodes to change this field in this composition. If it was on GKE, it'd be a different field um, that we may want to modify to present the same experience with GCP backing it. Uh, importantly, the developer that's interacting with our abstract type does not have to be aware of what's happening behind the scenes. So you're giving them a Heroku or, or your own platform-like experience, um, but you're getting to decide how that maps to your different cloud providers or your on-prem solutions. So you may be wondering, how do these different types uh, become present in my cluster? How am I able to just say, I'd like these AWS types? Well, the Crossplane community maintains a number of different providers, um, and you're free to write your own as well. For major cloud providers, we maintain them along with help from those cloud providers. Um, but you may also write one for your own custom on-prem API and then include those types you define there um, in your compositions that you supply as abstract resources to developers. And the way that you package all of this up is by creating a cross-plane configuration package. Uh, we like to call it a, a platform configuration because you're saying these are the different APIs that my platform is going to support. And in a little bit, we'll show you how that can be presented to you in a nice console that you may be familiar with from other cloud providers, but in a much cleaner way because you're only seeing these abstractions that you've defined yourself. So here we're creating a configuration called myorg-cnp. Um, and you'll see we have some metadata here about that, um, which can help upbound cloud index those things for us. It's going to, when we build this with our CLI tool, it's going to um, go ahead and take those types that we've defined and use some of this information to build it. And we're saying we have a dependency on cross-plane slash provider AWS, and we want version 0.11.1. .1. 
And basically what that's going to do is say, when I install this into a cluster with cross-plane installed, I want to make sure that all those different types that I specified in my composition here are present there for me. And I want them to be reconciled by the controllers included in provider AWS 0.11.1. Once again, you could package your own providers um, and create a dependency there. So now I want to show you actually putting this into action and what this experience would be like all from a command line perspective. So let me pull this up here so we can look at how we may use the crank uh, configuration tool. So this is our CLI for crossplane. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we're in that directory that we are just looking at. We want to package this up and push it to a registry. What that's going to do is allow this to be indexed and for us to see what's inside of it and for other consumers within our organization to see it. And when you create a new platform, you're going to be able to say, I'd like to create it with this configuration and I can see what's present in that. So to do that, we're going to do crank package build. And I want this in the hash Dan org and we'll tag it with v0.1.0. So this is our initial version here. And we should see it building the package. And when it finishes up, it's going to let us know um, where it has built. OK, successfully built package. And now we want to push this up to the upbound cloud registry, um, which Crank will do automatically for us. And we also want, again, want to, again, specify that we want to push the thing that we just built momentarily. There we go. All right, so we're pushing that package. And we can see those successfully pushed to registry.upbound.io in the hash Dan org with the tag v0.1.0. So now we have this present in the upbound registry. And any Kubernetes cluster we have with Crossplane installed, we can now install this. And it's going to get provider AWS for us, make sure all those types are present, and also create new types that folks within that cluster uh, can interact with. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster running here. We can just see that it is a global, global excuse me, a local um, Kubernetes cluster, single node kind cluster. Uh, so this could be anywhere. This could be running on a cloud provider. It could be running on prem, prem. It could be running on your local machine. I'm running on my local machine here. And what we want to do is install that configuration. So we'll say crank configuration install. Once again, specify the one that we want. And let's call it myorg-cnp. So this is the name that we want to give this configuration that's installed. Um, and it's going to pull this from upbound cloud. All right. And if we now look at crank configuration list, we should see that our platform that we defined has been installed in the cluster. But what we can also see is that the provider that it depends on is present here. So we see provider AWS running. Uh, what that actually means behind the scenes is that all of those different CRDs for AWS have been installed. So we can see all of those present there. And we should also be able to see that those abstract types that we define that depend on those CRDs um, should also be present. So as I said, we like to call those XRDs. So if we get our cube control get XRD here, we can see that we have that cluster type uh, defined. And if we wanted to see what was backing that, we could actually look and see that our composition is there as well. But from an end user perspective, you're just going to be creating instances of this. So if we looked at the CRD, Crossplane takes care of taking that abstract type, making sure that type is available within the cluster. Um, and you can see that as an end user by looking for that. So here we see that that cluster type is available for me to create instances of. And if you are using Upbound Cloud, you'd see that present in your cloud console um, for you to look at and create instances of, and it would tell you exactly the configuration that you need. Since we're doing all of this from the command line, we're just going to create an instance in the typical way you do in Kubernetes with a kube control apply. And you can see how simple this is here. All we're saying is, please use this AWS provider that I've created with my credentials. Um, I want this number of nodes, which is the only configurable field here. And I'd like for you to write the connection secret to ClusterCon in the default namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and create that here. And we see that that was successfully created. And if we now go and get that, we should see that it is synced but not ready yet. What's happening behind the scenes is Crossplane is saying, 
okay, I see this abstract type being created. It maps to these core resources. And I'm going to go provision those resources on AWS. And I'll make sure they keep that same configuration that you specified. So if we pull back the covers a little bit and looked at behind the scenes, we could see um, that there's actually a bunch of AWS resources getting provisioned. So for instance, we have all of these IAM role policy attachments, the IAM roles, you can see the cluster and it is being provisioned right now. And you can see that the, the references between them were resolved and the node group is waiting for that cluster to become available. So from an SRE perspective, you have insight into all of the most granular managed resources um, that may be in the backing cloud provider. But from an end user perspective, all you need to do is say, get that type that I created and wait for that to come available. And when it does, I'm going to have a cluster um, to talk to uh, with the cube config in the secret that we specified. So if we look for the secret, we should see, so these are some of the ones we wrote, um, but this cluster connection here um, is the one that's going to have our cube config in it. So if we want to provision any resources on that, we now have a way to connect to it. So that's a very simple example about how you may go about of providing a very simple platform. You can imagine this could grow to new types. You could update your platform and have new types come in. You can version it uh, just like any other uh, OCI image that you would package something into. So that's the basic workflow, but now I'm gonna pass it back to Grant, who's gonna show you a little bit more about how this can all be abstracted away from you from using a product like Upbound Cloud. Cool, thanks so much, Dan. Uh, that was pretty awesome. So like Dan said, once you publish this platform configuration to the Upbound registry, you can publicly list it for the world to see. That's an Upbound registry, uh, Upbound.io or you can make it available to just a few folks in your organization. And pretty soon you'll be able to instantiate these configurations from Upbound Cloud, which gives you an easy to, to use management interface for all your platforms. So on the right here, you actually can see Upbound Cloud. And here we give you a view to monitor resource statuses. So checking in, for example, on the VPCs you just created, which Dan showed. And Upbound Cloud actually lets you see both the lifecycle status of the underlying CRD and crossplane, as well as the health status of the actual EKS cluster running in AWS. And this way, you get a single pane of glass into all the infrastructure running in both your data centers and clouds of your choice. Now, next, Upbound Cloud's actually, it's important to note, built for modern DevOps practices. So it's a great tool to use for the entire team. And Upbound Cloud makes it really easy to create and manage teams and users, just like any other enterprise SaaS product would. But, and it allows you to set and manage Kubernetes RBAC policies for those teams and users across all the different platform configurations you've uploaded. But the real killer feature for teams in Upbound Cloud is what we call like a self-service console. And these are consoles you can actually build and curate in Upbound Cloud. So many of our customers have told us when we, we've been working with them to evaluate the product is that they really wish their teams had access to the latest services offered by a cloud service provider as soon as they're released. However, every time a new service is released today, customers typically have to do security audits, they have to update policies, and then they have to train all of their teams how to use them in a way that doesn't run up the cloud bill. And so with Upbound Cloud, we actually give you a way to empower teams to use a new service as soon as it's released. All you have to do is update the platform configuration Dan just showed you how to create with the latest cross-plane provider version, specify the parameters you wanna make available for app teams to change on the, on the fly, and then just go into Upbound Cloud and give all your users and app teams access through it through our permissions UI. And so on the, the right of the screen, you can actually see some of the compositions Dan just created. And he's gone into Upbound Cloud, given his app teams access to those compositions in our UI. And so when an app team logs into Upbound Cloud for the first time, they're welcome to what looks and feels like their own personal cloud console, where they can self-service infrastructure safely. Now, not only do a lot of our customers want their developers to self-service this infrastructure abstraction, they also wanna make sure that the teams don't run up their cloud bill too much. 
And so in a future webinar, we're actually going to show you how customers are able to set and share policies like cost controls across the teams in Upbound Cloud and across platforms. So we're really excited to be releasing all of this to GA later this year and are super encouraged by the early interest we've received from customers who are doing POCs with us and evaluating the product. If you're interested in learning more about everything you saw here and are interested in working with uh, us to build your own Kubernetes paths, we'd love to get in touch and learn more. And you can actually contact us at info at upbound.io. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Uh, I have a feeling there's a bunch of different questions that the audience might have. Uh, if you're watching and have a question and haven't already joined our, the Crossplane Slack, uh, upbound-cloud in the Crossplane Slack is where you can ask us some questions. So we'll turn it over to Q&A and let's see if our audience has any questions for us so far. While we go take a look at that, um, Dan, I do have a question for you. One of the mm -hmm. things that I was really impressed with, with like the platform configuration um, flow that you showed was, you know, I'm, I'm not, a, I used to be a programmer. I'm not really a programmer anymore, as you well know. Um, <laughs> it's about the last thing you want me to do, it turns out, is write code <laughs> at Upbound. But, um, you know, I was just curious about how much programming knowledge do you, does one have to have before creating a platform configuration like you did? Like, did was there a bunch of Go code that you had to write behind the scenes before doing, doing this demo? Or what was that process like? Yeah, there was no Go code that you actually had to write to um, be able to define a new platform. Obviously, you're coming from more of an SRE or platform team personality um, if you're going to be writing these configurations because you are going to be configuring the underlying services, right? So you are that persona within your organization. Um, that being said, one of the beauties about being able to package these up and push them to a registry is that you could actually take one off the shelf as well. Um, so, you know, if, if a company or an organization or an individual wanted to make a certain platform configuration uh, publicly available, you could actually install that into your cluster and say, oh, okay, I see that, you know, company X has defined this composition here that is basically everything you need to run an EKS cluster. And this is kind of the interface that they've said that this is abstraction that you'd work at. Um, and, and so you could use that off the shelf and you wouldn't even be writing any YAML in that case. Um, and, and so there's lots of uh, improvements we can make in that area. And as the community continues to grow, um, it's going to be easier and easier just to pull things off the shelf. Awesome. That's, that's super exciting. And kind of related to like pulling things off the shelf, um, one of the audience uh, members asked, you know, what's already available in, publicly in the Upbound registry? What can I use today? And so that's super exciting. The Upbound, so Upbound Cloud is um, in a public preview. It's our, we call it our community preview. The registry is live and, and running. And so you can actually go ahead and spin up uh, an Upbound, create an Upbound Cloud account, spin up a Crossplane instance inside of it. Right now it's time limited. If you want to remove that time limit, just reach out to us at info at upbound.io and we can, we can help you out there. And then you can go install things from our, from our registry today inside of Upbound Cloud. Yeah, um, and, and one thing I'd like to add to that is uh, a pretty powerful thing, which I, I glossed over a little bit, um, is that all of these providers, right, are, are present right now um, in, the, in the Upbound registry. Um, and that, that's a great benefit to you, right? Like uh, the, the majority of the kind of logic and, and power behind what we just did was that we were able to uh, install provider AWS and get all that functionality right out of the box. Um, so that's a big part of what's present. And once again, you could write your own provider for your custom use case as well and put that in the outbound registry, either private or public. Yeah, so, so Phil actually asked in our chat, you know, which providers do we have today that are supported? Which cloud providers, I think, is, is what he was saying. Yeah, so right now we have um, provider uh, AWS, GCP, Azure, and Alibaba, um, all with kind of like differing levels of support there. Um, we're thinking by the end of the year that we're going to have pretty full coverage ac across all major clouds. Um, that being said, there's also work on some things that you may think of as non-traditional providers. So um, a provider is basically anything that can provision resources somewhere for you. So that could be within the same Kubernetes cluster, that could be on a remote Kubernetes cluster, that could be on a VM, et cetera. So one of the things that I'm really excited about um, and, and some folks at Upbound and in the Crosswind community are working on is a provider helm. So you can imagine in that composition there, we had um, you know, a IAM role. Uh, which is a resource that the API 
um, for AWS provides. Similarly, Kubernetes with you know Helm provides the, oppor uh, the opportunity to create a chart. So we could just as easily represent that as a type we could include in a composition and then abstract away a chart from a user. Um, and then you get into really powerful situations where we're provisioning an EKS cluster and then a chart which is going to be provisioned on that EKS cluster, but it's all one thing. So I think you mentioned early on when, when you were kind of giving the, uh, the, the talk about what was difficult about configuring Kubernetes clusters, you know, often you don't want just a bare bones Kubernetes cluster. You want to install your service mesh. You want to install some monitoring and logging and that sort of thing. Um, so take that EKS cluster composition we use today and add in Linkerd, add in, you know, FluentBit, anything like that, and go ahead and provision that all with the same level of abstraction there. Um, and you can see some really powerful stuff happening. Awesome. Um, and then the question, the other question that comes up kind of uh, frequently with the providers is, you know, these cloud services are changing all the time. Um, APIs get versioned and things like that. You know, how do we keep up with all the changes uh, on the cross-plane side of this? Yeah, so a big part of that is partnering with the cloud providers themselves, right? So, um, you know, they have great documentation and that sort of thing, but working with them directly, they obviously know their services the best and they know how to interact with them better than anyone else. So we certainly want to um, encourage collaboration with all cloud providers on that. Um, another thing that's just an architectural design, which you may have noticed uh, when we were looking at a composition there, is that all of our resources are what we call high fidelity, meaning that no matter what the AWS API says or the GCP API, we're going to mirror that directly. And so whatever experience you have right now of interacting with those cloud providers, at the managed resource level, the, the most granular level, that's the experience you're going to get with Crossplane as well. So, you know, there may be a time where someone in the Crossplane community thinks that, okay, I don't like the way this API works. Well, the advantage of making it a high fidelity representation is both that familiarity, which I already mentioned, but also there's, there's copious amounts of documentation that these cloud providers put together that define how these different configurations are going to actually result in the service being provisioned. And we can take advantage of that when we mirror those directly. Um, so we don't wanna duplicate any work here. We wanna form strong partnerships um, and just enhance the experience that, that users of those different clouds are already having. That's awesome. Um, I think the, we've got maybe time for a couple more questions. One that just came through uh, from JBW in the chat is, you know, what value is Upbound Cloud providing me if I just am using one cloud? And so I'll, I can definitely answer that and take field that question. Uh, most of our customers, for what it's worth, are using one cloud today. Um, and the, the vast majority of them, I think, aspirationally want to you know, go to multi-cloud or, or foresee, you know, multi-cloud in the future. But even if you're just using one cloud, it's fairly typical to need to run applications in multiple different regions and need to manage infrastructure across those regions. And so Upbound Cloud still gives you a way to actually uh, partially like configure and set up multi-region environments and then deploy applications into those regions without a whole lot of um, code changes to the applications themselves. Uh, the second thing too is that, you know, one of the values we see, not just with like a single pane of glass to manage the infrastructure, but because all of this infrastructure is actually represented as a cross-plane, uh, as like a, a Kubernetes object in cross-plane, it's constantly being reconciled. So traditionally a lot of infrastructure setup and configuration done with, you know, scripts or some other procedural tool you know, it's kind of fire and forget. You, you set up the infrastructure once, you execute a script, you run a job and it's configured. But what can happen is what's called like configuration drift. And so someone can go into the cloud console who might accidentally, uh, you know, knock something over or might accidentally have access to it and not know what they're doing and change a configuration setting, which could take down an application or a service. And so cross-plane, what you can do with it um, is, you know, define your platform, put it uh, as a cross-plane platform configuration, instantiate it and run it in upbound cloud and have it constantly being reconciling, eliminating any sort of configuration drift and ensuring that you have a really high degree of uptime and reliability. So I think that's probably all the questions we have for now. Uh, this was super fun. I think we're going to do 
another uh, couple of um, another webinar coming up pretty soon, and we'll um, be sure to tweet and post about that. Uh, if you have any other lingering questions, feel free to post them in you know pound upbound dash cloud on the Crossplane Slack, or you know you can shoot us an email at info at upbound io as well. Awesome. Yeah, well, it's been great to have everyone here today. Um, obviously, this recording is going to go up um, after the conclusion of our webinar. Um, but I think we can go ahead and wrap it up, as Grant was saying. Um, we appreciate everyone who's able to come out today. And uh, we'll definitely look forward to the next one of these. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.